I used to be able to do this without notes, but <laughs> I'm a grandma now. Um, welcome. Um, I'm happy to see all of you here. To me, there is no difference between there being one person here and one a thousand people here, because we can all make an impact and spread the word. So I want to begin by talking about how we've all seen the images, read the reports, and witnessed the news of the civil rights violations in the media. We've seen pictures of dads laying face down with their babies next to them, and this is probably why many of you are here. They would like to convince us that this is about citizenship. If that were true, then the government would strive to provide a path to citizenship. Instead, they are committed to vetoing any legislation like HR 6, the Dream and Promise Act, that comes their way. They would like to tell you that this is about legality. But since it is legal to seek asylum in the United States of America, and the crime of being here without documents does not merit the punishment we are seeing, then we know that this is a lie. They would like to tell you that excluding our undocumented neighbors is best for this country. But the truth is, is that we depend on our undocumented citizens in many aspects of our daily lives, from the food industry to construction to tech to the medical field to education to law and so on. Undocumented citizens contribute as much, if not more, to this country than citizens. And they do it at the risk of their freedom. They would like to tell you that this is about resources. Right? They're stealing our jobs. We have to feed veterans. But the truth is that our undocumented citizens pay into our community in the same way that we do. Many of them file taxes without being able to get that back. Many of them are not allowed to access our government resources like welfare, etc. So what is this really about? Simply put, it's about money and power. Our current incarceration system has profited off the pain and suffering of people of color since the inception of this country. This profit has been escalated at the expense of families throughout the country. We demand cheap labor so that we can pay low prices, but we criminalize the act of driving to work from the very people that are giving us the goods that we require. That ain't right. Creating a system where we punish people for seeking a better life, that feeds this mechanism. Money's bride is power. We are subjugating an entire section of our population so that we can exploit them without giving them any civil rights. It's the new Jim Crow. Just look at the debate over the census question. The power structure fear or it fears a true count. The power structure fears a true census because it may reflect a changing America. An America that is not Eurocentric, as they would like. An America that is rich in diversity and culture. They are scared of being outnumbered and losing their grip on a power base that is based on the assumption that we are all the same. Who among us would not move heaven and earth to create a better life for our family? Some of the most patriotic people that I know that I've ever had the pleasure of meeting were undocumented. Are we really the kind of country that supports the exclusion of people based solely on their citizenship status? For those of you who are here because you can't tolerate the events we are witnessing at the border, let me tell you that families are separated in this very community through the same enforcement arm of the government that mocks the suffering of women and children at the border on their Facebook page. They come into town and pick up members of our community whose only crime is not being allowed to request citizenship. What can you do? Well, you can become active and write your representative. You can support organizations across the country and in this very straight, uh, state. Organizations like the Alabama Coalition for Immigrant Justice, the Adelante Worker Center, SPLC, the ACLU. Not just monetarily, but you can volunteer. You can engage your foreign-born neighbors and show them that not all of us agree with this current climate. You can speak up for them even if you're the only voice in the room <laughs> with all the other voices. If you see ICE, you can video and report it immediately. You can advocate and intercede for your undocumented neighbor. And you can become active and vote. There's an undying hope 
that the foreign-born have that draws them to our borders. This is why they risk life and limb to get here, and this is why we should rise up and be worthy of that hope. The slogan of the immigration movement is Si se puede, which means yes, we can. Not I, but we. I think it's time for us to count ourselves among this we and come alongside our immigrant neighbors regardless of their status and prove that cruelty, suffering, repression, and discrimination based on a piece of paper are not what, Ameri what makes America great. What makes America great is the people. All the people. Gracias y buenas noches. Thank you, Yelisa. Uh, now, I would like to welcome up our final speaker, uh, Jacob Morrison. Jacob, who is a former leader in the College of Democrats at UAH and statewide, holds a bachelor's degree in mathematics, is a member of the Industrial Workers of the World, a former restaurateur, as it were. So I was pretty nervous when uh, I saw that I was the last speaker. So uh, I hate to go, I hate to have to follow up behind all those other great speakers, but I'll try my best. All right. Tonight, I want to connect the absence of protections for workers, both here and abroad, with the concentration camps currently being run on our border. I think by the end of this, you'll see that this is part of the long history of our country terrorizing workers domestically and internationally in the, service of, in the service of capital interests to the detriment of workers everywhere, and that includes our own native workers. What is important to note about these concentration camps is that they are only one link in a chain of exploitation. In these times ran a cover story on immigration by Brianna Rennix a while back, and she summed this chain up, chain up nicely. The United States pays Mexico to stop some people before they get to the border, then menaces and detains a subset that the U.S. Border Patrol apprehends in the act of crossing, and then sends Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, to round up and deport some of those who get through. These brutal policies keep the unofficial workforce stable at around 8 million over the past 10 years and keep undocumented and guest workers fearful. But even this is only part of the story. It is worth asking, why are so many coming? Why are the nations of the global south in such disarray? The United States has her part to play in this too. Time after time, below our southern border, the people of a country will elect a leader to represent their interests on the world stage and resist exploitation by imperial powers. As you can imagine, this does not sit well with the imperial powers, and so the United States has aided myriad military coups in some way or another to overthrow democratically elected leaders and install right-wing fascistic yes-men for capital. This is invariably followed by economic destruction of the country, a rolling back of workers' protection and social services, and political repression. In 1964, the CIA supported a coup in Brazil that sparked 20 years of brutal military dictatorship, a dictatorship that the current president of Brazil was a part of and remembers fondly, it's worth mentioning. In 1970, the U.S. supported the takeover of Chile by a military dictator Pinochet, a ruler infamous for his brutality and whose name has recently been invoked positively by right-wing radio personalities. In 2009, a violent coup of the Honduran government led to a wholesale slaughter of union organizers, journalists, and political opponents. The United States were not supporting the union organizers. This is only a small sample and I could go on for a long time. There is a long history behind why people are fleeing these places, and this history is largely caused by the United States. Because our government wanted southern neighbors more subservient to capital. This is one of the fundamental injustices of our immigration system. So many of these people wouldn't even be here but for the destruction of their country by ours. And then our leaders have the nerve to pull up the ladder by, that their own ancestors used. It so greatly illustrates the fundamental sociopathy and lack of human empathy by our ruling class. 
Not only do they destroy countries for their own selfish wants, but then they pay governments to terrorize people, fleeing these places, so that the ones that get here are so brutalized that they won't fight exploitation. And then, once they get here, they are not safe. They face tyranny from the government, and they face marginalization from a public that has been fed a steady diet of nativist propaganda created by the billionaire class. We must remember that the elites are not simply benevolently advising the working class on the most efficient means by which to extract higher wages from them. They have created a calculated propaganda campaign, and unfortunately thus far a successful one, meant to divide us up, meant to make immigrant workers fearful of violent deportation and fearful of their employers and fearful of their fellow workers, meant to push us to point our anger towards each other instead of up where the source of our problem really lies. Because while it is true that the migrant workers can sometimes drive down wages, though it is important to note that the extent to which this happens is blown far out of proportion, and this downward pressure is not from the migrants but from the boss exploiting the migrants, this downward pressure on wages is absolutely dwarfed when we compare them to the downward pressure created by having a divided and unorganized working class. States where union membership is the strongest have much higher wages than places like Alabama where people are only unionized in the single-digit percents. In fact, some countries have unionization rates of 80% or more, and in these countries they have no need of a minimum wage because they can secure higher wages for themselves far higher than a paternalistic government edict could ever secure. Fast food workers in other countries, unionized, make more than $20 an hour. We have skilled tradesmen in America that make less than that. Why? Because we are unorganized. That's the point here. The problem with stagnant wages among native workers is not immigration. It is because we aren't organized. And we are not organized to a large extent because we have allowed the elites to divide us up. The IWW, the industrial workers of the world, seen through the propaganda and steadfast in their dedication to solidarity, was the only major labor organization to come out in opposition to restrictions on immigration as they were first being proposed, and has remained steadfast in its dedication to the rights of all workers born on this side of the line or that. It has continued on this ideological path that we can see clearly laid out by an IWW founder and national political figure and one of my personal heroes, Eugene Debs, in his letter disapproving of one of the first restrictions ever proposed on immigration. He said, The plea that certain races are to be excluded because of tactical expediency should have no place in a proletariat gathering under the auspices of an international movement calling on the oppressed and and exploited workers of the world to unite for their emancipation. Away with the tactics which require the exclusion of the oppressed and suffering slaves who seek these shores with hopes of bettering their wretched condition. These poor slaves have just as good as a right to enter here as those who seek to exclude them. Upon this vital principle, I would take my stand against the world and no species argument of subtle and sophistical defenders of civic federation unionism who do hesitate, who do not hesitate to sacrifice principle for numbers and jeopardize ultimate success for immediate gain could move me to turn my back upon the brutalized and despairing victims of the old world who are lured to these shores by some faint glimmer of hope that here their crushing burdens may be lightened and some start a promise rise in their darkened sky. End quote. We must not allow the money to leaks to continue dividing the working class. Rather, we must begin the work of uniting ourselves in solidarity with each other and in opposition to the tricks of the elite and the limitations on migratory rights. The amount of wealth that has been redistributed upwards because of the criminalization of migration and the division of the working class is likely incalculable. You have far more in common with the Honduran, the Guatemalan, the Mexican, and the Syrian immigrants, asylum seekers, and refugees than you will ever have with the Koch brothers or Betsy DeVos. Know that they want to divide us up so that they can better exploit all of us. Know that this has been the trick of the elites forever because they have always known that a divided working class is one that cannot resist their exploitation. If we affirm not only the political and workplace rights of migrants, but their basic right to live here in the United States, in fact, we cannot effectively do one without the other, 
their lives will obviously be made better, but it will be good for the whole body of the working class. Without fear of violent deportation and concentration camps, without fear of retribution for their existence, we can embolden our immigrant brothers and sisters to rise up against their workplace exploitation and assert their rights to the full fruits of their labor, to assert their rights as men and women to dignity and respect. We can link arms with the entirety of the working class and say together in one voice that we know our worth and none of us are getting it. This is how we improve the conditions of the American worker, not by turning, for, turning them on foreigners residing in this land, but by connecting all of us in solidarity and moving forward together towards a brighter future. Immigrant rights are workers' rights. Workers' rights are immigrant rights. Solidarity forever. is that the things that are happening on the border, the literal concentration camps, no matter what the media may tell you they are, they are children in dog kennels, they are 100% concentration camps. The important thing to take away from this is that our lives are not better in any way by turning a blind eye to those who need our help. It is our responsibility, and it is us who must come together and act to help shut this down. And this is a thing that you can all do here at home, because I know some of you may be thinking, well, we don't live anywhere near the border, we don't have those types of resources, so how can I help? Here in the United States, we can, especially in a place like Northern Alabama, the county of Madison invests a large amount of its energy and its money working with ICE, and you, <laughs> can petition those who represent you to work against that. And that's what we need to be doing. We need to be going and talking to our representatives, both at the state level, at the city level, at the county level, to immediately end all actions and all participation with ICE and the Border Patrol as soon as we can. And you can all do that by making sure that you follow along with the Facebook page that you signed up for for this meeting. We will be posting links to another organization group very shortly in the next day or so where you, where you will be able to be kept abreast of those types of movements. The solidarity lies in our numbers and in our power as a community, not as an individual. And with that, I would like to bring back Reverend Majadi to Give us a final prayer and closing, and then if you brought a candle, you can light them. Got and I would also like to take one more time to thank our fantastic musician, Beth. So if y'all give her a round of applause. We have heard a lot of fire, earth, and wind come through this joint. And we're going to have to use that energy, that positive vibration, that high vibration, that high consciousness to engage these systems. We have to engage them, and we're going to have to be creative in them. We're going to have to get that information and understand how these things are intersecting. And we're going to have to deal with the historical dynamics behind them. This is not new by any stretch of the imagination. And if we're going to bring about what we know America can be, because it ain't got there yet, I don't have any um, recollection of it being anywhere near greatness. But I can see it in your faces. I can feel it in your souls. I can feel it in your spirit. I'm looking at you. You are what I would like to live around. 
you, uh, you would keep me safe. I would make sure I have food and water for you. I would make sure you have a safe space to be, and your children are going to be safe around me. So as we close, I don't want you all to separate from each other from this space, get to know one each other, um, one of the, um, um, get to know each other, pass some phone numbers, connect on Facebook, Twitter, all that kind of you know, stuff like that, and work together. Throw some money at it. Organize it with folks. The brother Youngblood said, we got to organize. That's an old mantra. Organize, organize, organize. You got to get it together. He was right on that. That's it. So as we close, we're going to bring um, those of you who do have candles, if you can come forth to the front. You all can come up, come up here if you have some candles, bring them forth. My partner Susan, she has a few. I'm going to go get a couple. Um, she's got some. She's got the lovely white on Susan. If you can stand up, sweetie. Hello. Thank you. So if you have some candles, y'all come up front. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Just here. This is family. It's a family game. You can that barbecue here. Come on. Come on, y'all. Bring our beautiful selves up here. Come on now. My beloved is going to do that some music. Real quick.
Thank you. 